everyone. My name is Simone. I am a senior at Queen's University majoring in communications. And today I'll be interviewing Mackenzie Blaylock. Mackenzie is a manager of quality control and technical services at Smoothie King franchises. Mackenzie is also a member of IFT. IFT stands for Institute of Food Technologists. Hello, Mackenzie. How are you? Hi, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. What initially drew you to the science of food as a career path? So uh, I originally, I went to UMass Amherst. I did my bachelor's and my master's of food science both there, um, but I wasn't always a food science major. I actually was a major of communications for my first year um, as I kind of navigated what I wanted to do. Um, but there was a program offered uh, out of UMass Amherst that uh could open uh, discounted tuition options to other um, state residences. So I lived in Connecticut at the time, but I went to school in Massachusetts. And so there were certain majors that if uh, your home state did not offer it, they could meet you halfway on the tuition cost. And so I was raised in a low income household. Uh, and so the option to save money was very appealing to me. And I wasn't really feeling like communications was my fit. And so when I was looking over the options, that fit into this program, food science and nutrition were both um, options. And so I've always had a love of food. I grew up in a family where everybody could cook, everybody could bake, um, very food centric household. And so I thought, you know, this communication isn't working for me. I should give this a try and see what I think. Um, I didn't know much about it at the time, but I felt like I had enough of an interest in food in general to where uh, I could maybe make it work. Um, and when I started actually taking food, true food science classes, I realized that it was a perfect fit for me. Um, I have a love of science. I have a love of food. Um, and it just turned into being a perfect fit for me. And uh, I actually saved $8,000 every year that I was a major of food science. And so I declared as my as a sophomore. And so that ended up saving me $24,000 off of my student, uh, in totality, my student loan cost, um, which again, coming from a low income household was a huge deal. So it not only worked for me financially, but I really fell in love with that after I started taking the classes. Uh, and I, I never regretted the change. So well, congratulations to you. I wish my school offered that. That's amazing. <laughs> it was a very niche offering for if you lived in New England, um, because all those states are very small and they I think they try to work together on things like that. So it was it was really awesome that it was an option. Yeah, well, that's amazing. Congrats to you. Yeah, thank you. Welcome. My second question for you today is what high school courses or college courses have you found to be the most applicable slash important um, to your profession? Yeah. So uh, in high school, I unfortunately didn't get like the traditional home ec uh, kind of classes. So it really was more college focused. Um, and it was after I changed over to food science. So um, being the manager of quality control right now, food microbiology is definitely important uh, to my day to day job. Um, understanding foods, how they react under certain conditions, things like that, that ties into food microbiology, um, but also food engineering and food chemistry. So, um, you know, when you apply heat, what happens to certain substances? When you freeze them, what happens to certain substances and how do they react? Um, things like that. Uh, because when you're handling ingredients in all of these different environments, you really have to have like the, the base understanding of what's going to happen to them so that uh, you here at my role, I can ensure that our suppliers are handling our ingredients in the proper way um, so that we're not putting anybody at risk from a food safety standpoint. So. That makes sense. Yeah. At my high school, I didn't have um, home ed either. So I totally understand. I wish I did. I love cooking yeah, as well. I, I really wish I did too. I, I wish I had gotten more at the high school level, but it really was primarily college. Um, and outside of courses, there there also were internship opportunities. Uh, so there would be local companies uh, around UMass Amherst um, that would link with us and they would offer internships. Sometimes scholarship money could be attached to it, um, but it would be like a real world situation where you could test that knowledge um, see how things perform. Uh, those were always great. Um, and also we would sometimes visit local food production facilities. So around UMass Amherst, there's a lot of agriculture. Um, I remember we visited a um, butter manufacturer. So we got to go in and see all the equipment and how they make butter. Um, and that was a really cool experience as well. So those, those were really nice so that you could see how it works in the real world. Wow. Whoa, that's amazing. And honestly, you already answered like my, um, question in the future. So that's great that we already jumped into internships and all the opportunities. So thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Absolutely. Um, 
So my next question is, how did you engage with IFT or Feeding Tomorrow, the foundation of IFT as a student and such or new professional? So you kind of touched on it a little bit, but can you just describe more of how your engagement helped you in your field? Yeah, so UMass Amherst has a really old food science program. I think it, it's, it might be the oldest in the country. So it's, it's actually been active for over 100 years. Um, and even though food science, uh, it's a smaller program, um, it's always been there. And so they've always been very involved in IFT. So it was basically told to me as soon as I declared like, oh, you really should join IFTSA, which is the IFT Student Association. Um, that was the, one of the first things they told me. They have a discounted rate for students as well, knowing that students um, aren't, you know, rich at that point. Um, so I was able to become a member. Um, they really uh, actively supported student engagement. Um, so it was it was really nice that you had the support. It could be intertwined into our courses and our classes, um, IFT involvement. And I think that there could even be scholarship money that could help you travel to the IFT convention that happens annually. Um, so that was really awesome. Um, and yeah, it was just really nice that they put so much support around it. Um, for your involvement and for your growth as a professional, uh, in addition to the courses that you were taking. Um, and also there were Feeding Tomorrow uh, scholarships and competitions. Uh, I never made it to the final rounds of those. They were highly competitive, but um, again, they would either allow maybe some time during the classes to course and um, to meet about it and try to, you know, figure out what you'd like to submit. Um, or they would open the building at night to after hours and allow you you and your team to get together and, you know, work on that recipe or work on what you were doing. You could use the equipment, um, which was really nice. So they, they always just were highly supportive. Um, and there were some local chapters as well. So IFT is a uh, national organization, but there are local chapters. So you could do some more things hands on and in person with people local to you. Um, so after I finished my master's in food science uh, at UMass Amherst, I moved to Virginia. I joined the Virginia local chapter, met some people there that I really enjoyed. Um, and then now I live in Texas. And so I'm a member of the Texas chapter as well. Um, and they'll host networking events. Um, they'll host dinners, things like that. Uh, there's a supplier night that they'll host once a year um, and they have suppliers come out. And so there's always either some kind of educational course, um, supplier related event, networking uh, it's just really nice that you have all of those options. Um, and now I, I volunteered a little bit more. Um, we just opened the Early Careerist Resource Group, which we're really, really excited about. Um, it's meant to help um, early professionals within the first 10 years of their career. Um, and basically what we're working to do is um, help you understand when you major in food science, what can you do with it, right? Because it seems like it's very particular, but you really can do quite a bit with it. And we wanna make sure that when you're early in your career, you're young, you you can move around and try new things that you understand all of those things that are options to you. Um, and so that group is brand new. Um, I'm the co-chair of the Career Pathways and Skills Development Committee uh, with another member. And so we're, we're really excited about launching it and hoping that we can help young food scientists kind of navigate what path is best for them so that they end up in the exact place they want to be, so. Wow. Well, congratulations on all your new ventures. That's that's amazing. Yeah, thank you. IFT has always been a huge piece for me. It's it's great. <laughs> and so now we're kind of moving into your everyday, um, I guess, life as um, a food scientist. So can you describe what your typical workday entails? Yeah, so uh, it is somewhat flexible in food and it is um, both for QA and for product development, which was what I had done before I came here to Smoothie King. Um, but it's nice. It's not very uh, like day to day. You can change. You, it can change quite a bit. Um, but mainly here, um, QA is known to be kind of like a final sign off on a lot of things. Um, so something will be developed and then they bring it to QA and they say, hey, just double check this for me and make sure everything looks good. So I do a lot of that. Um, Collaborative meetings uh, involving, you know, the operations team or the product development team. Um, I'm, I'm always involved in those. Um, we drink a lot of smoothies here. So um, there also could be some smoothie samplings or maybe we're showing something to the leadership team. Um, and I usually will help with that. Um, a big piece of my role as well is um, managing supplier relationships and document management. So um, all of the suppliers that we partner with, they'll send us a slew of documentation um, that allows us to work with them. And so I manage that process. So I make sure that everything they send me is within date, um, within our parameters, um, that their third party audit scores look good, things like that. 
Um, and so managing all of that, you know, we have a lot of suppliers and there's a lot of documentation that comes with each one. So um, keeping that all organized is a big piece of my job. Um, and then the last part of my job that it's, it usually doesn't keep me in the corporate office, I actually will travel for it, is I actually audit our suppliers myself as well. So um, mm -hmm. I've been trained in food safety auditing. And so I'll go and visit them at their facility, um, walk around, take a look, and make sure that they're following the processes that they should be following um, so that everything gets made not only correctly, but safely. Um, we want to make sure that we're feeding everybody um, safe food. And so when I audit our partners, that's mainly what I'm looking for. And that's probably one of my favorite parts of my job. Um, because I get to go and visit them, build relationships with them and, and, you know, grow as a partner with them. So I, I enjoy doing that. That's amazing. So you mentioned that you, um, test a lot of smoothies. Is there a way that you know that this is, I guess, safe to, to drink or do you just find out when you already tasted it? Like, how does that process work? So everything that we bring in to make a smoothie, it shouldn't need any additional treatment to make it safe. It should already be in the condition where it is safe. Um, it's really just making sure that it's managed at the correct temperature. Um, but every smoothie itself, once it's going in, once that ingredient is going into the smoothie, it should be ready to go so long as it's been kept at the right temperature. So it's really just temperature management. Ah, okay. Well, thank you. I was just curious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so what is one aspect of this career that people would not necessarily expect? Yeah, I think one thing that people would not expect is the amount of trial and error that comes in, um, you know, arriving at a final product. Um, there are so many different ways that you can get there. It's not necessarily... Um, the first way that you figure it out is the only way that it can be done. Um, and your leadership team might even challenge you to say, okay, now that you've done this, um, how can you do it differently? Can it be made more efficient? Can it be made more cost effective? Um, so there's a lot of work that can go into one single project. And sometimes it feels like projects like are never going to end. Um, but there are, you know, a million ways that something can be tweaked or changed. Um, and you just have to be really patient um, and, and work through that. I think the record uh, for the most iterations that a smoothie had gone through here at Smoothie King is 150. Wow. Before they said, okay, this is what we want. So, um, so yeah, there's a lot of different things uh, that you need to manage and it might not necessarily be just like a one and done. Uh, so uh, it's, it's fun though. It's, it, that's something that you should enjoy. The trial and error should be, should be fun. <laughs> that's awesome. So how has your participation in IFT or feeding tomorrow impacted your career success? Yeah, I think the biggest impact is is kind of what I already talked about is just the real the real life exposure that it gave me. Um, it's very different being in a classroom than it is uh, being out in the real world and, and doing, um, you know, things related to food science. So um, those internship options, um, the visits to the facilities, those were amazing. Um, and IFT allowed me to do more of that even after I left college. So I was building those relationships. I could go and, and see those people in their professional environments um, and also being with, you know, food science is niche. And so being with people that are like-minded like you, so they understand the industry, um, all of those connections came through IFT. So discussing ideas and goals with them. Um, if, if I had something at work that was um, proving difficult for me, I could go to one of those people and say, hey, do you think you could help me with this? Or, um, hey, have you ever worked on something similar? And how did you end up finishing that project? Um, having people with the same mindset as you and understanding of, of what you do is, is incredibly helpful. Um, and so, yeah, really just the wealth of information that IFT gave me, whether it was educational courses or access to people, um, the monthly magazine that comes out. So that allows me to stay on top of the food trends um, and industry related things, um, webinars. I mean, it's just, if it's constant, there's discussion forums, you can ask a question on IFT um, forums within any kind of group and, and people can answer the questions for you and, and offer you help. So um, it's just a mass of information and um, being connected with really smart people. So it's it's always been an amazing resource. Yeah, that's, it sounds like it's very helpful and resourceful. So my last question for you today is what words of wisdom do you have for someone considering this occupation? Yeah. So in order to be a food scientist, I have two things. So one of them is, is being patient, which is what I had talked about before. So, um, the trial and error, um, you have to be patient and you have to know that it's worth it in the end, um, putting in all of that work and also just having the highest level of integrity. So when 
my mindset changed from being in product development to uh, quality assurance and food safety. Um, you you are working on a project that could could quite literally affect the lives of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people when you think about it. So if you're working for a big name company um, and it goes out to grocery stores, storefront retail, all of that, people are buying things that you, you know, you might've worked on, which is, which is really cool. I mean, there's nothing cooler than going in a store and pointing at something on the shelf and saying, Hey, I made that, you know, um, like there's just no feeling like it, but um, you have to ensure that you are doing the right thing when you're infecting that many people's lives. So um, don't cut corners to shorten that process. You have to have patience with it. Um, you could possibly leave somebody, you know, at, at any kind of food safety risk if you were to start cutting corners. And so, you just can't do that. It has to be done prop properly. Um, the safety of our consumers who entrust us to make food for them is the highest priority above all levels of profit, efficiency, or anything else. Um, and so, you know, it's our it's our responsibility and our duty as food scientists to make safe food. That's something that, you know, our consumers are trusting us to do. And so um, you have to do the right thing. Um in that regard. And by doing that, you know, you, you improve the lives of, again, tens of hundreds of thousands or millions of people um, by doing that. And so you just always have to have that highest level of integrity. Um, that is a perfect way to um, end this interview. I totally agree. And that makes mm -hmm. sense because you're in charge of literally like millions of lives. And so, yeah, yep. You have to, you have to do the right thing. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you so much, Mackenzie. I truly appreciate um, everything that you had from your advice, your story, and also your words of wisdom. And I want to thank you all for joining us today. For more information about IFT, please visit the IFTQ career page and find out how IFT can help you with your career development. Until next time, have a great week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.